Hi everyone. Today's topic of discussion is on preauricular sinus. Preauricular sinus is a sinus tract lined by squamous epithelium, usually seen in front of the helix of pinna. It is one of the most common congenital anomalies of pinna. Like most congenital anomalies, it occurs as a result of an abrasion in the normal sequential development. And since it is imperative that you learn about the normal development of pinna before going to the theories of preauricular sinus formation, pinna develops from the first and second branchial arches. The branchial arches are lined externally by the ectodermal cleft and internally by the endodermal pouch and resemble the gills of a fish and hence giving it its name. The lower part of the first branchial arch and the upper part of the second branchial arch gives rise to six hillocks of his which fuse together at the sixth week of intrauterine life to give rise to the pinna. The tragus and part of helix arises from the first arch and rest of the pinna arises from the second branchial arch. Faulty fusion of these hillocks of his result in formation of the preauricular sinus. So, what are the theories of preauricular sinus formation? First of all, you have the embryological fusion theory, which is the most widely accepted theory. Then you have the ectodermal infolding theory and also incomplete closure of first pharyngeal groove. Incomplete closure of dorsal part of first pharyngeal groove. Preauricular sinus can be unilateral or bilateral. There may be a strong family history associated with it. It is most often sporadic, but sometimes it is associated with the branchio-autorenal syndrome. In that case, it is associated with the genes EYA1, 6, 1, and 6, 5 genes. So, the number 6 is having a lot of significance in case of pinna, right? So, what are the things that we have seen associated with the number 6? The 6, 5 and 6, 1 genes associated with the branchiotorenal syndrome. Then at the 6th week of intrauterine life, the pinna is formed by the fusion of 6 hillocks of his. And along with that, the pinna attains adult size at 6th year of life. So, these are the things where you can see pinna has got significance associated with the number 6. When will you do a renal ultrasound to rule out branchiotorenal syndrome? There are certain situations when it has to be done and it is dictated by the Wang's criteria. It is not Wong's criteria, it is Wang's criteria and these situations are history of gestational diabetes in mother, family history of deafness or ear anomalies, history of limb anomalies, gastrointestinal anomalies, heart anomalies or craniofacial anomalies. In these situations, you have to do a renal ultrasound to rule out branchio-autorenal syndrome. Preauricular sinus usually presents with discharge from the sinus when it is getting infected. In that case, you have to do aspiration and give intravenous antibiotics according to the culture results. And you can use a lacrimal probe to drain the pus through the sinus itself, but incision and drainage is not recommended because it can result in disruption of the sinus and scarring of the area. The definitive treatment of preauricular sinus is surgical excision of the whole sinus tract and for that you will have to inject mithrin blue dye into the sinus through the opening and then an elliptical incision is put around the sinus and the whole sinus tract is excised as delineated by the mithrin blue dye. Recurrence can occur if the whole sinus tract is not excised. So, it is important to use a more radical approach in the form of supraauricular approach to prevent recurrence. In this approach, a postauricular extension of the elliptical incision around the sinus opening is put and the whole tissue which is seen superficial to the temporalis fascia is excised along with the preauricular sinus and a piece of cartilage is seen attached to the base of the preauricular sinus. So, that's all for today's topic. I'll be coming with another interesting topic. Until then, goodbye.